Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Nathan Gobes, filling in for Jeffrey Davis this morning. I want to thank you all for listening, and I want to thank uh, MTP Software for hosting us. They're the largest CRM software for the sports and entertainment industry, and we're really appreciative of the studio they built us here. Joining us for all these segments is John Dustin of JED Insurance. Welcome, John. Nathan, thank you for having me. It's always great to have you in the studio, and you bring some great guests in as well. Uh, the next one that we're going to talk to is Jim Roche, principal at Robust Alternatives. Fantastic. Welcome. Glad to be here. Thank you. And it's always fun to have Jim on the hot seat. Okay. Yeah, really <laughs> so, Jim, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and transition into what Ro Robust Alternatives is delivering? Certainly. Absolutely. So, so my background, I'm a CPA, and I, I've got my MBA in entrepreneurship from Babson College. And through that whole process, I saw a bunch of companies that uh, were seemingly profitable but uh, didn't really have any financial systems in place. So I saw an opportunity to help companies that were already doing fairly well in their industry um, get some more knowledge um, from a financial standpoint and from a management control standpoint. So I jumped in and, and launched the company to, to help with that. Any particular industries you have a passion for, anything you like more than... Yeah, so, so, so my passion is really inventory. You know, inventory adds a layer of complexity to the accounting um, equation that a lot of people need a whole lot of help with. So I do a lot with manufacturers, distributors, and actually uh, construction as well, which it's kind of inventory. They're building things and trying to figure out how much things cost to build, and, uh, and, and that's th those are industries that, that I really like. That being said, I, I cover a wide range of um, the, the usual service industries as well. Um, on the CFO side, um, as well as on the tax side. My, my tax practice, I do a lot of tax planning for companies, and there's a lot of interplays between taxes and the finances. Nobody wants to pay taxes, but if they're going to increase their bank loans, the bank needs to see some profit there, so <laughs> it's, it's a balancing act for sure. It, it is a challenge because there's a lot of even service businesses um, like manufacturers where the entrepreneur has a great idea and a passion for what they do, but they don't have that backroom skill set to deal with bank loans and lines and covenants and collateral. And So when do you see yourself entering the business at a good time? Is there a good, uh, Obviously, the first day would be the best, but in general, when do you see yourself uh, successfully entering a business? Yeah, so that's a real good question because uh, there are some companies that I do jump in pre-revenue. You know, if they're a company that knows they're going to need some big bank loans or know they're going to need some private equity or angel investors, um, they need some financing uh, um, acumen right out of the gate to convince people to invest, et cetera. Um, on the other hand, there's a lot of companies that come out and when they're small, um, the owner has an intuitive sense of what's going on, even if they don't have a, a, a strict number sense and they don't get me involved right away. But then they'll get to a point, uh, I've got a guy I'm working with right now who just brought on a second division, if you will, to augment his, his existing product lines. And he's now incenting this guy based on the profitability of those product lines. However, he doesn't really have the tracking in place to figure out what the profitability of those product lines are. So I'm helping him, who he's, he's been in business for 30 years now, and, uh, and, and he's just got to this point where he needs some more information because he's kind of changed or added another piece of his business, if you will. So you're adding value, it sounds like, through giving him some financial literacy, helping him create some sort of dashboard or checkpoints. Is that what Robust Alternatives kind of steps that, that, in? That's exactly what we do. I see a lot of companies, they have a lot of data, but not a whole lot of information, or they're not quite sure when to use which pieces of data. You know, you talk about something simple as revenue or sales. Um, well, are sales the uh, booked orders that the salespeople bring in, or is it the shipped orders that the shipping department ships out? Or is it the cash that's collected after they've already shipped the orders? And, and, and there's a different time to use each of those different numbers. And if you're using the numbers at the wrong time, then you're not going to get the result that you'd hope for. So from a client perspective, uh, especially in challenging times, it sounds like your CPA background could be helpful. Because I think a lot of startup companies don't know whether to pick accrual or cash basis. Elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, and that's a good point. I mean, not just accrual or cash basis, but even if they're, if they're just figuring out how to launch their company, do they pick a corporate form or are they an LLC or just a general partnership? And, and so there's a whole lot of pluses and minuses for each of those from a, and this is a little bit where legal crosses into tax. Um, so, so I do help people figure out, you know, what's the best structure for them to run in? What's the best way cash or accrual to, to look at things? One's simpler than the other. One involves, you know, collecting the money and paying the tax on that money versus the other, you could have some profits without cash. 
So, so there's a whole lot that goes into that as well, and, and that's absolutely where I play. And Jim's a high-energy guy. He's a marathon runner. I can't so tell I, at all. <laughs> I would imagine when you get involved with the company and deep into the culture, if there's sort of, I wouldn't say disputes or disagreements with partners or whatever, you can kind of help them make sense of what's going on. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I definitely do that. And when people hire me, they know they're getting my honest opinion. I'm not there to sugarcoat things or to, you know, you hire me, John, and maybe you have a partner you're in a disagreement with. Well, I'm going to tell you how I see the business, not really slant it your way or your partner's way. And I'll, I'll give you open, honest uh, advice. That's, that's, where I, that's where, I, um, where I try to uh, get involved with the company. And the CFO alternatives range now from, you know, I've seen people go in on a website, on site, to client visit locations, to being on permanent site a few times. How do you like to deliver your service? Yeah, so I'm all over the place with that as well. So like some of my clients, it's just a uh, once a quarter check-in um, on, on the low end. Uh, well, actually, on the low end, it's even a project. You know, someone's coming in and, and, and doing a build-out, an expansion of their business. I'll go in and help them with that build-out budget. And maybe that's just a one-off project. Um, most of my clients, I'm there on a regular basis. Some of them up to a day a week. Um, but typically, it's I'll go in and do a monthly review or a quarterly review. And typically, as I put systems in place and they hire people to kind of fill in behind me, um, they need less and less of me. And eventually, if they're successful, I work myself out of a job and I help them actually file. I hire their own full-time CFO. That's a good solution, and hopefully they end up in a good, with a good outcome from that. So from your perspective, and we talked a little bit about this in a prior interview, you know, the real estate market's been overpriced. The stock market's been rallying, but it's going to have some uncertainty and be volatile as an election year. What are you kind of seeing entrepreneurs and business owners do right now to, to protect themselves for what's to come? Well, so, so a lot of business owners will look at that and they'll figure out, do I want to invest in the market or in some real estate or do I want to plow some more company, more money back into my company where I know I can have a more, uh, a deeper level of control with, with growing that. So a lot of people are reinvesting in the company because they see that there's, there's uncertainty out there. Um, although it's actually kind of strange. So I've, I've got a client that's in the high end remodel market. Um, so they see people that when the market's doing great, uh, people are feeling happy and they're spending money on, on their homes. When the market's not doing great, they're not going to take their money and stick it into the market. They're going to reinvest in their homes. So it's kind of, when I first saw that, I thought, well, this is kind of strange. I would think, you know, the market does great, the company does great, and, and vice versa, it doesn't. But, uh, but, but people tend to invest in, like I said, what they can control. So uh, it, it's, it's interesting. Where do you find a lot of your clients? All my clients are, are word of mouth. Um, I do a lot of uh, marketing um, from a network perspective, network marketing, and I meet a bunch of other professionals who, in, in my mind, uh, like yourself, they can add some value to my clients. So if a client needs a great insurance guy, you're top of mind, and, and I'm going to pass some business over to you. But This uh, was not a paid announcement. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. It was not. Um, but but so that, that's how I do business. I get to know people, and, and they understand what I do, and they pass me business that way. Th- does um, Babson have an incubator for startups or anything like that? I'm just curious. That's a personal question. Yeah, so, so, so they do have a, a business plan competition, um, and, and so they do have a panel of experts that come in and, and and do that. I've never been on the panel side, uh, but not to brag, but when I was at Babson, we did uh, come in third place with the, uh, with the business plan competition. So, and what was your business? Uh, um, so it was actually with a friend you know, Lisa Levesque. Um, we did a dental lab business. Oh, wow. And, uh, and, and we were told the only reason we came in third as opposed to better is we didn't have plans to blow it across the country and, 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 and roll up the whole industry. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it, was a, it was an interesting time. So what's your geography with all your energy? Are you countrywide yet, or are you just... Specific? So I'm not countrywide. <laughs> so so my, right now my client base stems from um, Hampton, New Hampshire, um, down to Mashpee, out to Worcester. It, it, it's kind of... When I got into this business 15 years ago now, my, my game plan was let's not get on planes. Let's stay within a, a, an hour and a half drive. Um, however, now with technology, I'm finding that, that I can have a, a longer reach than that where I VPN into customers' uh, accounting software and, and can, can, can work a little bit that way, but uh, not quite yet countrywide. Apparently, were you traveling before this gig? I was traveling before <laughs> this gig, yes. And, and my kids were, were younger, and I decided, yeah, let's not miss their lives and, and try to uh, be closer to home. 
Wow, well, this is great. How could, if an entrepreneur is sitting out there and says, I need to get to Jim today, how can I get to you? Uh, well, certainly uh, my website, which is under uh, relaunch right now, I've got a marketing guy working on that, is robustalternatives.com. Uh, my company's name is Is Robust Alternatives, um, and so if they Google robustalternatives.com, they can get uh, get my contact info and uh, reach out to me that way. A lot of information and energy here with Jim. This was great. Yeah, thanks, Jim. It was it was great to have you on the show. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. We've been speaking with Jim Roche, principal of Robust Alternatives. Uh, I want to thank uh, our sponsors again, uh, Gordon's Liquors, for one, that uh, hosted our uh, entrepreneurial cafe last week. It's an event that we put together to bring back all the past guests to the show, and it's a great networking event. Um, and I want to ask everyone to uh, follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. We're, we're just about everywhere. Nearly 6,000 people, or oh, excuse me, over 6,000 people have been on the show, and uh, all those sites are a great way to follow us and see all our posts. This has been Radio Entrepreneurs. We'll be back after these messages.